Hey everyone, I'm Vincent. And I'm ooh wee I look just like Lonnie Holly. Today we're gonna be covering Lonnie Holly's newest album, Myth. Lonnie Holly is a sculptor turned musician that released his debut album just before music in 2012, um, and then followed by keeping a record of it in 2013. I didn't realize how interesting he was until I started reading about him, and he's telling all these, like, ridiculous, like, crazy stories. <laughs> he's got 15 kids, ha and had his first when he was 15. Uh, when he was young, he said he was traded for a bottle of whiskey when he was four years old. He was, like, I mean... When we say he was a sculptor, we don't just mean, like, he uh, made, like, a sculpture once or twice. Yeah. He was, like, an artist by trade. That's what he did, was make sculptures out of, like, junk and found items. And um, he was a short-order cook at Disney World. And then he went to, like, some like one of the worst juvenile prisons in the world. And this man is so full of wisdom and stories. He's 68 years old from Birmingham, Alabama, and he has some crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, but I guess back to the music, his music is so experimental and grimy and jazz-infused, um, and, and he's got really raspy, passionate vocals that I can't help but, like, evoke that image of a, of a junkyard or, or, you know, just a trash heap in the best way possible. I mean... I mean that in the kindest way I possibly can. I mean, as the Lonnie kind as Holly can. sounds like a junkyard. Yeah, and especially for the music video from I Woke Up in a Fucked Up America. It just seems like it just takes place in a giant heap of garbage. But with that track, I Woke Up in a Fucked Up America, I discovered just like the masterfulness of the sound he produced and how crazy it was, how experimental and strange and odd and just captivating it was and just how, how much character he was given and you describe the character of his own life and how strange it is and i wanted to see how strange his music was going to be and i was really excited lady stuba album's called myth it's one hour and 16 minutes this latest outing features contributions from his fellow musician laraji the jazz duo nelson Patton, producer richard swift Probably the most famous person on here, uh, saxophonist Sam Gendel, and then producer musician Shazad Ismaili. So I know a couple of these names, uh -huh. especially Richard Swift, and they are nothing to shake a stick at for sure. They are um, pretty highly regarded musicians and and um, producers. Yeah, and I was really captivated just looking at the pure grandness alone of the track's length. One of these tracks I snuck off of a slave ship is 17 minutes in length, and it's probably one of the longest tracks I've heard all year. And we've learned, we uh, listen to some lengthy tracks throughout the year, but this is probably most definitely the longest, and also one of the most captivating, in my opinion, because I think it may go on, while well, it may go on for a little bit too long, maybe miss the point by about five minutes, but I think it does have a stellar and committed confidence and narrative throughout, and it tr you feel the effort coursing through these minutes, but like, that's the only track where I feel like I'm kind of burnt out, because yeah. I think it... It, at some point, enough is enough with and this one idea. it's length alone as well. Because I think this this album is a hard listen. I'm not going to not say that. But I think at times it is a very rewarding listening. I think just getting through the first three tracks alone, I think, are incredible. I'm a suspect. Back for me and how far is spaced out. You feel like Lonnie Hawley is using the void to shed his soul. He's using the void, not in a way like King Cruel uses the void, almost like unconfidently and uncharismatically and nonchalantly just make music in because he thinks it's fun. Lonnie Holly is using the void to depict himself. He's opening his chest, revealing his heart, taking it out, and feeding it to the void. A black hole. He's throwing he's throwing into the void, and the void is the greatest atmosphere for him, to, for him to be in. It complements his raspiness so well. The key work on this album especially feels very nostalgic, feels very... Uh, Old-timey. Folky, it's too. It's classic. 
very folky pianos that I love on this. It's very classic. He's a trained improvisational piano player, and it shows on this. There's a lot of great and steady piano work that is the backbone of this album. And essentially through a lot of this tracks, it is only the piano. I love the moment of back for me when it's just him and the piano and some occasional production in the background that'll pop in and out. I love it because it's just him depicting his soul and him just telling this narrative in this seven minute space, which I think is great. I think moments like I'm a suspect where he may repeat the same thing over and over, it gets jammed into your head and you can't get rid of that performance. It sneaks in. At first you may be, oh no, this is crazy. Yeah, it is, but it's crazy in the best possible way possible. That sounded stupid. Lonnie Hawley is just a person of character and he's a storyteller and he is, He's, improvis he's improvisational, and it's all off the cuff of his head. A lot of this album is just improvised. But while it is just improvised, or feels just improvised, I, I don't think that has an effect on it. I think this album's length is a thing of improvisation, but it doesn't... While at times I'm off-put by that, I don't think this thing suffers from that much. I think the only thing it may suffer from is times he may go off of these tangents with his vocals, but still then, his vocals are still captivating and still fun, and I think that's something you and me talked alone about it before, is just yeah. how, at times, it feels like he kind of runs out of things to say and just goes for kind of scatting of sorts, or just these ad-libs of sorts. It just kind of reminds me of uh, your grandpa that like tries to tell a story and then forgets what he's saying, and then this would be the blank space where he's trying to remember what he's saying except for Lonnie Holly is just uh, ad-libbing. He's just making a bunch of noise yeah. for the sake of filling the space with more noise. Yeah. I really like um, I Snucked Off a Slave Ship though, how it progresses um, because he's able to tell this really impactful narrative even though you get kind of burnt out with it. It is able to hit you home. You do feel like the importance and the struggle of this off the cuff narrative. Mm -hmm. And even though he states it is in his imagination, you feel for him, you feel for the character of him. And he also adds stakes through seeing the bodies float in the water of the slaves. You, 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 you get like the struggle of this track. And I love how the last like 30 seconds are, are of all these just like of just white noise of sorts or this experimental noise yeah. leading up into the very harsh, very clangy, metallic. I woke up in the fucked up America with the tubas and the horns very in your face and blaring. This thing is all off the cuff, off beat of sorts with him just shouting, I woke up in a fucked up America, just all throughout the track. And it doesn't get stale. It, it runs around five minutes and you think the song would, would get old really quick, but it doesn't. It just gets looped inside your head and that switches up into the next track with this very metallic, almost weird metered, synthesizer going on basically talking about uh, how artists copy or how people copy and how just because you copy someone doesn't make you good because you can copy something but it's not going to be as good as the original whether you want it to be you have to depict your own ideas into it yeah but especially like the final like two tracks down in the ghostness of darkness which is a very isolated kind of cold moment going into the very bright out of out of nowhere moment that's a nice closer sometimes i want to dance which is very heartfelt and lovely and it's just a nice warm moment to go to close this like hour and 20 minute epic on just this very heartfelt moment how he talks he just wants to dance sometimes and it's just very nice it's just i think this album kind of needed that that one bright moment to bring you out of like we've been through so much shit so now let's let's get out of that and have a lively moment to close everything off so it's not completely depressing just kind of a side note thing i really like when artists use the first person in their song titles um i'm a suspect i snuck off a slave ship sometimes i want to dance like i don't know i really like that it feels more personal and i think that lonnie holly really just succeeds in making you feel special yeah because when i listen to this i feel like i'm the only one with him and he's like Sit on down, let's go to a Cracker Barrel and eat some biscuits and gravy, and I'm going to tell you my life story. And then there we are. 
Yeah. In the Cracker Barrel Void. <laughs> cracker Barrel Void. I yeah. love the Cracker Barrel Void. <laughs> and we're just, I mean, we're just hanging out and he's telling me everything and I'm like captivated by these stories. Um, I just feel extremely like special when I listen to this. I feel like all of the emotions that he is going through or went through in these stories or is imagining he's going through um, in the stories. And I, I think that he crafts a really interesting narrative not because the narrative specifically is super interesting, but because of the way he tells it just comes across with this old man wisdom that makes me want to listen to my grandpa when he's talking about just like eating pork and beans for dinner the night before. And I'm like completely invested just because he's got that air about it. Or the authority of sorts or the age of respect, I guess. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's how I feel about Lonnie Holly and that's how I feel about this whole album. Yeah, I think Lonnie Holly shows you why he should be more popular on this because he's he's a mature figure that has a, a lot of breathtaking qualities about him and he has a lot of age and wisdom to provide with people, but also that experimental age that works so well on this and I'm surprised he isn't well known for where he is, especially on his stories alone. I think yeah. he's captivating in that sense and just his life experience um, and how he just has become the person he has become, I think is great. I, I, I love this record a lot, and I think it shows a lot of character. Um, I really enjoy it. I'm feeling, I'm feeling a great to fantastic on this out of 10. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the experience I had with this, and I hope we get to see more experiences from Molly Holly, and hope he does, does as much as good work as he did on this, and tells as fun a story, or uh, tells as interesting a stories as he did on this. Mm-hmm. Until next time, guys, we have a weekly podcast called The Anthony and Todd Show. We have it every week on Apple Music and Spotify, the best of the show, every week in audio form. And we have plenty of other reviews on our YouTube channel. I want to put the review for Kamasi Washington's Heaven and Earth on screen right now. So if you want to watch that, just click on it. But until next time, guys, I've been Vincent. I've been Trevor. And see you, boys. Bye, everybody.